whatever underlying problem is still there. Somebody has pain, and you go and you take a painkiller, okay? Whatever tissue is damaged in your body that's causing you to have pain is still there. The painkiller is not healing you, okay? And what happens a lot of times is the painkiller gives people some, like, a false sense of ability to do things, so now they go to work, and they work, and they start lifting heavy things again, and they're still destroying and damaging those tissues that are there, not allowing it to heal. You know, I, pain, to me, I think is a good thing. It's, it's kind of our, our, our warning, our check engine light, you know, that uh, to say, hey, slow down. That's what God gave us. God gave us pain to say, hey, slow down. You shouldn't be doing this. Okay? So I think pain is a good thing, right? I don't want to suppress that pain. I want people to have it so they know what their limits are in, in a lot of ways. But when we look at most drugs, if we take somebody with high blood pressure and they take a medication, a vasodilator, uh, to lower their blood pressure, okay? Well, what we're doing is we're making the pipes bigger. Right? We can go down to Larry's Plumbing down the street over here and ask Larry, what happens if you replumb somebody's house and put bigger pipes in the house? Okay? He'll tell you, lower blood pressure out of the thing. Okay? But the question is, why did the person have high blood pressure? Let's not just take the symptom away. Let's ask why. So when we're going and we take things like Sudafed or NyQuil or whatever other medication, over-the-counter medications for colds and flus, we're suppressing our immune system. That's why we don't have the runny nose. The runny nose that you have, the cough that you have, that's your immune system functioning to help you rid yourself of the virus or whatever it is that's inside you. That's your body flushing it out. Right? If we stop that, Okay, maybe we don't have to deal with the symptom that we don't want to deal with because it's annoying to us, but you're also stopping your immune system's ability to deal with the infection. All right? So we don't want to look at, we have so many people out there that they go to medical doctors, they try to get drugs to suppress their symptoms, <coughs> they don't get any help. And largely, it is because they have an underlying immune dysfunction that's taking place. All right? Something like Enforce can be greatly beneficial to these people. Right. We also have people that we talk about who don't have any symptoms, don't even know that they're sick. One gentleman that I, that I uh, treated uh, had no symptoms. He was an athlete. He wanted to uh, figure out uh, how to fine tune his body so he could be a better athlete. He worked at a Whole Foods in their vitamin section in the Whole Foods. He took every supplement known to man. He got it for free from anybody who he wanted to get it free from. And uh, he, he thought he was like the healthiest person on the face of this earth. Right? I know the people that work for him and I talk to them. They also said that he was the meanest, nastiest person in the world to work for. Okay? So we started working him up. We found out that he had some type of chronic immune dysfunction going on. We worked on his immune system. His comment to me was, wow, I didn't realize how sick I was. Wow. He goes, the world feels like it's been lifted off my shoulders. Wow. The people who worked for him said, came up to me and said, what did you do to him? <laughs> because he's now the nicest person in the world to work for. So we have a whole host of people who don't even know that they're ill, and they are very ill. All right? <laughs> then we also have a group of people who we know who are getting sick all the time, fighting things uh, they can't get rid of. It's another great group of people that can benefit from Enforce. And then we have people like myself who I have no known immune issue going on that I am aware of. I mean, I don't, but I'm not aware of it, right? But I take nine a day because I don't want to be in that position. Amen. Okay? I'm going to do everything I can today so I'm not in a position of where I am ill and I'm fighting the battle to get better. I'm going to do everything I can today to position myself so I never get in there. And so one of the things that I do for that is I take nine in force a day. All right. um, so um, the other thing, that one last thing that I just want to kind of end with just so that we, we understand um, is we generally use things like we think that we, we're so concerned with our hand washing and touching things. You, know, you go into a bathroom and all the paper towels are on the floor because people don't want to touch the door. Um, 
and the hand sanitizers that we use all the time now are available publicly all over the place. You go to the grocery store, we get the towel out and we can wipe down the grocery cart and all this, right? Because we don't want to get sick. Right? Yet we still end up being just as sick as we always are. <laughs> and things change and things. But, um, and one of the reasons why that is, is most commonly disease is transmitted airborne. We're breathing it in. Okay? Think about it. When you go and you fly on a plane, right, you're breathing in everything that everybody on that plane has. Who knows what all those 200 people on that plane have? All right? But you're breathing it. All right? So, that's, so when we look at things that are getting into us from an airborne state, all right, that's bypassing uh, our body's kind of main. Actually, do you know what the, the number one, the first line of defense that the body has as its immune system? Skin. Skin, absolutely. The skin. You guys heard this before. <laughs> uh, so that didn't count. Uh, your skin. Your skin's your number one defense. So the way I kind of think of it is, let's say you had a knife and that knife had a bacteria on it, and you laid that knife down on your skin, you're not going to get an infection. But if you took that knife and you cut yourself with it, you breached your skin barrier, right, then you can get an infection, right? Now you're relying on the immune system on the inside. So you can think of this as, as the, 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 the wall on the border, okay, <laughs> and it's keeping everybody out. Right. But we know people get in, yeah. right? One or two of them. Okay? Uh, the, uh, so they get in, and when they get in, we have to have another line of defense. Okay? Our immune system is that line of defense. Okay? So we breathe things in. We eat food. Food has bacteria on it. Okay? It goes inside our body. Now our immune system has to deal with it. Right? So what we want to do is we want to build up that immune system. So we can deal with these things that cross these barriers that get in our body and we can get rid of it. And it doesn't become chronic in our body. We don't want to end up like the Germans did in World War II. Right? <laughs> right? And that's what happened as the basis of what happens in chronic illness. We have something that suppresses our immune system to a point of dysfunction. We no longer can deal with it anymore, and we're in a losing battle. We end up in a medical setting to try to take care of it, and we end up on medications that suppress each and every symptom that we have, but it doesn't take care of the underlying problem. Who should be on Enforce? Everyone. Everyone should be on Enforce. Thank you very much. <laughs>